into the cloud. Okay. Great. Thank Rod. you. Rod. Great. So uh, first, thank you very much, Joseph and Brian, for to for taking care of the billing. Um, it seems we are almost there. Uh, yeah. So thanks a lot okay. about that. Uh, first thing I wanted to say. And then I had, actually I had a, a couple of questions for, for you, Joseph. So if you uh, already know more or less where you, um, their consortium is going to publish the announcement that uh, the COVID, that the project was funded. And if you have some news on the uh, working group. So um, we'll probably produce an announcement over the next couple of weeks because um, the things have been not settled with the payment. I wanted to make sure, you know, we had that sorted out before um, I went to the marketing committee and asked them to do that. So I, I think within the next, certainly within the next two weeks, we can make that happen before Christmas. Um, and uh, it will be um, probably what we'll have is we'll at least have a blog post and the Twitter campaign, try to get people to amplify that message. And uh, we'll have um, Eric and uh, Iona listed, use their affiliations listed as Cal State um, uh, East Bay. What I haven't talked to Iona and um, Eric about yet is whether in that announcement, we also want to include uh, a plea for more volunteers. So I, I want to make sure at, at, you know, we don't yeah one step at a time thing, right? I, I think so, yes, because as Eric mentioned in his email, we actually have a couple of funded RA positions in spring, and we are expecting to have at least three students working on this. Um, so I, I don't know, um, and I know Eric, Professor Seuss is busy, so I don't think we should commit because you know if we do have volunteers, somebody has to kind of work them through the rigors of it. So maybe we would put it on hold and keep it like more of a internal need for volunteers. All right, well, uh, we'll, we'll have to talk more about that. But so the, the um... There's, there's also multiple levels of asking for help. So I, I think that we, sh we need to emphasize in the announcement that it is an open project and anybody who wants to become involved, um, but we don't have to push heavily um, right now. So I, I'll, I'll work, I'll talk with you and Eric later yeah. about that. But yeah, yeah, but definitely. We do, we do want to get that going. Mm -hmm. so, so in the, then you asked about the working group. So what we have established is a COVID-19 working group. And the way that works in the ARC consortium is that we have to ask the ISC, um, the, um, uh, which is the technical committee, you know, responsible um, for approving these things um, to get it done. So we have that and we have a number, we have like three projects, well, two, pro two standing projects right now in this working group. One is the, um, uh, the COVID data form that we do with the Stanford um, um, Data Science Institute. And then this project, and then we have a couple of other things that like our ad hoc, uh, for instance, uh, one of our members, Tibco, it has done some stuff and written some blog posts on COVID-19 work that they've done, and we're going to promote that. Um, but it, so the working group is established. Um, we've, um, you know, within the, within the working group, uh, we have a lot of freedom to set our own rules. So everything that, that um, we talked about within the, um, uh, you know, in the grant paper, is, is essentially set up. So no one is going to get, um, you know, operational uh, authority to do anything that doesn't go through Eric and CSUEB and, and nothing else can happen regarding the strategy w without, um, you know, what we consider to be the management committee. So I think I can make that clear in the announcement too. And that will include the management committee, I think should include the, um, uh, David, Manuel, myself, and Eric, and and that um, 
So that's a small enough group to make sure there's some continuity. But I, I think we're essentially set up um, now. You know, what needs to happen is uh, the, the, the quicker we can come on board and start doing work, the, the more you can forget about, <laughs> you, you know, what's happening. But I, I don't think there's, so everything structural is in place. It's still an open source right. project. You're still the owners of the project. Nothing happened at all, you know, with, with, um, uh, with any of the rights or intellectual properties. So my goal over the, you know, by early, um, by early um, next year is to have it, uh, you know, people working on things and, and you guys happy with how it's proceeding. Great, great. Thank you so much, Joseph. Thank you very, very much. Um, I, I think that the opportunity uh, that Joseph is giving us is great uh, for the visibility of the project. And I'm really afraid that we uh, might not meet the expectation of people coming to the repository and mm -hmm. working on that. So I really, my, my fear is absolutely not about, I don't know, uh, uh, the, the intellectual property of everything else. Uh, I'm absolutely happy with the, the whole setup. My fear now is that we are not ready uh, to meet the expectation of people uh, coming to the project on the operational uh, side. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's my fear now. This is because we started to work for Two or three months now and i uh, uh unfortunately i know that we're all very busy but i i still had to take over the whole maintenance um so wh what i would like to do now is uh i plan to go on more efficiently and um i really think that uh, maybe i mean people need this data now they will not need this data in 10 right, years. Right, yeah. So it's absolutely OK for me if uh, the open position for students are coming in spring. I'm very happy about that. But I think that we should commit a, a bit more even before uh, to exp fully exploit what Joseph is, is, is uh, offering to us. So um, for that, I would have a super quick presentation to make like two minutes crystal clear what I, uh, okay. I mean. If I can share the screen. Okay. Uh, yes, should be fine. Can you see the screen now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, great. So, um, as Javis has said, now we are organized uh, in three levels. So, management team, I see uh, everything went absolutely, is going completely smoothly. And I think there is absolutely no problem with that. With members at large, I hope that uh, we will be able to attract more people. And as I said, on the operations, I, I, I'm now I'm a bit afraid that we are uh, late, a bit late on this level. So uh, to make things crystal clear on the operational side, we need we have three things now, which is the server, the packages, and GitHub. So the server has been running smoothly for like five or six months. I really think there's no need in messing up now with the server, with the maintenance of the server. Uh, it's running smoothly, so let's forget about that. Uh, in case of problems, I, I can take care of that. There's uh, no problem. For the packages, like the R package, Python packages, again, we had no issues on GitHub uh, with the users in the latest month. Everything was uh, stable. So again, let's forget about that. What's, what's left is GitHub. So everything now is happening on GitHub. Uh, during the second wave of COVID, we had, I had a lot of uh, people writing. Not only, the, the point is that what's public on GitHub is not the only thing that are happening because some people are writing to me uh, via email or in the private chat on Slack. And this is not, I think it's not fair for, for me and for the community because it's, I mean, why we are open source, why should we need something private, right? Uh, so everything is happening here and what's, uh, what's happening? So we need to add data, the data hub, to fix the issues and to improve the documentation for the people that are coming and joining the project. Okay, so the, I think these are the priorities now for, for the project. So adding the data, fixing the issues and improving the documentation. Uh, yesterday, I read from your email, Iona, that probably you are going to 
uh, do some uh, code snippets or exercises for, for the class. So that would be great if you can then open source your exercises uh, yes. on GitHub or on the website for the whole community. Yes, exactly. That would be the plan. And, you know, the documentation would be something uh, because I, I, I um, in your email, I, I know where Professor Seuss's focus would be the issues part, fixing mm -hmm. the issues. I'm more interested in the documentation right. and kind of the other right. part so that it's easy for people to access and Thank do you. something quick with the data so that, you know, it's to a wider audience. Excellent. That's great. Absolutely great. Uh, I also remember that you, uh, at the very beginning, you said this thing so that the documentation was not uh, clear enough for you. So I totally agree. We need to improve that. Uh, but whether you are fixing issues or writing the documentation for exercises in the class, I think uh, we um, should understand how the whole data hub works. Uh, otherwise, I mean, how, how can you teach uh, anyone else if you don't know how to do the things by yourself first? So um, that, that's why I really think that the, uh, I said the first day on day one, the best thing we can do is to make a first pull request. The first pull request on the GitHub to add a new data source, that way you realize exactly how everything works. So that's why I would like to add, if possible, uh, one uh, requirement for the operations team, uh, which is we go into the operations team as soon as we meet on the other work requirements and uh, we merge a pull request in the uh, GitHub repository. That's not, I mean, this is just to force a bit ourselves to make the first pull request because I know that after the first pull request, everything is smooth. Did, um, did you get Sorry. an email, pardon me, did you get an email from Eric last night? Yes. Um, uh, no, to today, yes. Yes, so did he, did he, he, he told me he would write to you after he had submitted a pull request. Did he not do that? Yes, I saw that. Uh, I, I also replied, yeah, but I, did. yeah. I, I, did, I can't find it on the GitHub repository. So maybe he forgot to commit or I don't know what oh. happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we're yes. getting close. Maybe we're getting close. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think I, I have uh, full trust in all of you. All, all that I fear now is that we are all very bored of this situation. And so this requires an extra effort to work on. Uh, but I believe that this would be a nice way uh, to push ourselves to a commitment and a deadline. So this is my proposal for today. And I would like basically just to uh, make a plan on the technical side. All right, so first off, um, how about if we, we opened up a Slack channel just for we this. We do have it. We do have, we a, Slack have a Slack so, channel. Yeah. Um, if you like, we can uh, do a private uh, chat for the, for the team members. So, I think, well, what I'm getting at is, um, is there a way for you to funnel all those other communications into the Slack channel? Mm -hmm. So you said you're getting personal emails and, and other, so, so I think the way, one thing is to enforce the use of the Slack channel. Maybe we need uh, to put a message out somehow about that. Yes, uh, we, we actually have it. It's the um, channel where we have more than 100 people. But the problem even there is that do not write in the public channel, they find my name somehow and they send me a private message. Yeah. So I try to tell them uh, post in the help channel or post in the data source channel. But since again, I'm, I'm the only one basically replying, uh, they, they realize they can. Okay, so how about, um, we need to do something to discourage that. I mm -hmm. mean, um, so you, you have to be forceful. Maybe you should just automatically forward them to a, an R consortium email account. Maybe I can set up something like that. I mean, the only thing that train people is, you know, not for you to continue to reply. Um, so, I mean, this is just an idea that, that we could open up a, an email account. Um, oh, you forward those messages. 
or we keep everything on Slack, uh, Emanuele, but you just, I mean, you just tell them uh, like, no, ask your question in the help channel. Otherwise I don't reply. I mean, I know that you will be the only one replying in the help channel, <laughs> but at least we have a track of what's going on. And for people who yeah. will undertake the operational side or help you with the operation, exactly. take over, they, they see what's going on. Uh, yeah, you know, I maybe the student would just write me questions, whereas I ask them to, to pose the question on the forum. I never mm -hmm. reply to them. I say, ask your question I on the see, forum, I otherwise see, I don't I reply. See. You enforce I this. Uh, I, I would not go for another email account, maybe Joseph. Everything is already in place. Okay. Just... Okay. All right. I like that idea. So we force that discipline, and then we'll have to take some responsibility for you know assigning people to answer it, you know, to deal with issues in the Slack channel. Uh, so uh, okay. Um, I think both Ion and Eric are already on the uh, Slack. Uh, if you also, Joseph, would like to join, yeah, uh, yeah, I can please. send you the link later. Yeah, send, send me the link. So, let, so sure. let's do that. Now, let me, um, I have a couple of more, um, there's a couple of more developments. One, that the people from Procogia, which is a small company um, uh, that's a member of the um, our consortium. Uh, they they also are on the general, you know, COVID nineteen working group, and they asked me how the president of that company asked me how they could help. Oh, oh. so um, I think we can probably get them involved. Uh, one thing he told me is um, that they have AWS expertise. Sounds like they don't. We don't need that right now. But anyway, that they, they, they offered that. Um, but perhaps, you know, Iona and Eric, and we need to see how we can get volunteers maybe from, from this group of consultants um, to help out. So I think that's like, that might be the cavalry that could help out in the short term. So we should have a meeting with Eric and, and yeah. mm -hmm. next week to see, see how we can, um, you know, maybe we get them involved in the Slack channel. We have a... Um, we show them this short presentation uh, about the, the operations, and I think we have something there. The other thing is, is that I'm also involved with trying to help out the um, the Carnegie Mellon um, Delphi group. So uh, they have something called COVID Cast. Uh, it's a really nice website, uh, and what they do is. Uh, they're, they're, um, they built forecasts. They built a COVID-19 forecast and it goes to the, um, it goes two places. It goes directly to the CDC, but it also goes to the Reich Labs um, University of Amherst, a forecasting hub. So again, a, a fantastic site where they built an ensemble forecast. Now the, the Delphi group mostly is using a concern with US issues. Um, they have um, a special arrangement where they get F Facebook and Google mobility data. So they, they have a lot going on there. And I'm trying to interest them in this, in, in you know, in our data. So what, what I'm trying to do is at least make pointers to, um, to, different, uh, to different groups that are, you know, big league groups that are in the same kind of a space. Yeah. So we won't, you know, if anything comes yeah. to that, I'll, I'll bring this to the, you know, the, yes. the management oh, okay. committee, Good. but I'm, I'm talking about it as best I can. That's Thank you. great, Joseph. Maybe I can just make a, a comments regarding what the first thing you propose, like someone who wants to help. I believe, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Emmanuel, that what would be best is instead of having 10 people on board, like point, I mean, uh, uh, helping on sometimes it would be better to have someone who would dedicate maybe half a day per week or ideally one day per week, uh, you, you know, committing to the project. So someone who wants to understand the, the mechanics of the GitHub and, and, and is working a bit like Emmanuel and now like fixing the issues when they come up. And maybe this time over the week, it would represent half a day or one day overall of 20, 20 or 10%. Uh, so this, 
I, I believe this would be the best scenario, Emanuele, or what? Yes, I do agree with you, Dave, and I hope we are already there in the sense that I think that Johan and Eric are going to do this, and if they can't, uh, for any reason that may have changed, I hope that uh, they will be able to replace with some students or someone else. So I, I do agree this is the, the best plan, mm -hmm. but I think what Joseph was uh, saying is that we may have other opportunities. But I, I do agree that priority should yeah. be having at least one people yeah. committed to the yeah. project. Yeah. And then... Well, uh, I think we're clear on that. So, so Eric and Iona and, and I will meet and, and then we'll figure out you know, if we want to um, approach the guy from Procogia and, mm -hmm. and see whether that fits. But yeah, I think it's a minimal, the number one priority is to get someone committed a half day a week. That, that seems like, <laughs> that seems like um, a good strategy. Yes, that would be that would be the best. Yes, excellent. Yeah, I think I, th I think this transition is important now for two reasons. First, because Emmanuel mm -hmm. obviously has a lot of his of his shoulders on his shoulders, and because what we have seen over the recent months is that several hubs have been developed in parallel. Some of which actually mimic the methodology put mm -hmm. in place by Emmanuel. Eh? So we are just dividing the forces. So now if we can really take over, uh, I mean, if Iona and Eric can take over and uh, um, ensure that people can, can come with their issues and deal with this issue, we can do the marketing around to, to show like we have one hub, go with this one, don't try to mimic anything with a, a couple of data sets and wasting time here, join the forces. Right, and, uh, yeah, so. we have too many well-meaning amateurs who are... Um, it's a lot of noise. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so sorry, Imagine. Yes, Iona? No, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, I, I definitely see that the next step would be um, for me, Eric and Joe to meet up and make sure we take over um, and we have a clear understanding among ourselves who is doing what while we are familiar. Right? So, you know, the pull request definitely is the first yes. thing to do. Um, um, but I think uh, Eric does feel kind of confident as to what he's doing. So I think it's um, best if we can kind of talk it among ourselves, um, you know, early next week so that we have a system in place. Okay. Yes, sure. I, I will send uh, an, an email later uh, to ask for you to make a plan. Uh, I don't want to stress anybody for Christmas. So please. <laughs> well, yeah, Christmas is cancelled. We don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes, but uh, j just to make a plan, uh, then once we have this plan in place with the date for the first pull request, the date for the uh, documentation, I, I think will come later. Uh, and then that's, I think we are all set up both from the management side, the operation side, and we are ready to spread to the world. Okay. So um, let's. Um... Oh, sorry. And on Monday we have the press release in Neuchâtel. Uh, Excellent. So I will forward uh, to yeah. Make sure you forward me, me that. and Dave. Yes. And um, we'll um, and I'll get that to the our consortium mark marketing committee too. That's good. Well, we, we got some little momentum going here. Uh, let's plan again to meet. Um, well, Let's see what happens, but should we meet again? We should meet again before Christmas, I think. Yeah, that, and if, if, if necessary, we can have an emergency meeting, but I, I think, um, let's see what, what Eric, where Eric is. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is the need to bother Dave or, or you, Joseph, if you don't want to. I think that now the meeting should be on the technical side. Okay. So I, I do agree that uh, we on the technical side we do not have a meeting. We need sorry a meeting before Christmas, and with some deadlines. But on the management team, if you don't need to join, we can record the meeting and send it later to you. All right, I appreciate that. So let's. Um, so Iona and, and you and Eric, um, you decide and, and just let me know what. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I can and do. And instead, for the other uh, things that you need to discuss with Ayona and Eric, of course. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> when, when you like. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, Eric should be uh, more available next week. Uh, today is the last yeah. interview, candidate interview. So um, I think if we can meet uh, next week, uh, maybe like a Monday or a Tuesday. And yes, this, yes, yes. Yeah. With time, even at the end of the, yeah. of the week. No, I think, so yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I do uh, believe there's time. There's no hurry. There's, no, there's, you know, when you have the momentum, I think it's important we kind okay. of work on it. So I, I really do want uh, okay. to get going on it. Yeah. So do you know Eric hurt his shoulder badly? I know, I know. So he yeah. can't even type. So I, I think oh, wow. probably, I was going to just call him. Yeah, I was just. I think call maybe him. he couldn't with the left hand. He couldn't do the commit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry about that because he wrote to me, but I understood he was recovered. Uh, he was better now. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it's a poor guy. <laughs> okay, great. So pl oh, please, Joseph, if you can send the recording to Eric, that would be I will. great. And I will send a follow-up email to you with the Slack uh, link and to uh, Yon and Eric for the plan. Most excellent. Okay. So if Thank I don't see your face again, have a great holiday <laughs> as best you can. Thanks, guys. Best you can. Okay. So, you too. A happy Thank you holidays. Much. Yeah, Merry happy holidays. Holidays. Yeah. Thanks, Emmanuel. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.